بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We continue reading that which the author he has mentioned رحمه الله تعالى with regards to the clarification of the meaning of the testification that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah the correct understanding and the meaning of this great testification of faith as shahada bil nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as shahada lin nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama bil risala Shahadu to Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The author he mentioned, Rahimahullah wa ma'na shahadati Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah ta'atuhu fi ma amara wa tasdiquhu fi ma akhbara wa ajtinabu ma'anhu laha wa zajara wa alla yu'bada Allahu illa bima shara'ah. That he said, Rahimahullah, that the meaning of the testification of faith that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to obey him and that which he has commanded and to believe everything that which he is informed of and to refrain and to stay away from and to avoid and leave off everything that he has prohibited and that Allah should not be worshipped except in the manner that he has legislated. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In our previous class we have touched and spoken about the first issue here with regards to fulfilling the rights and uh, having the correct and upright understanding and uh, the true belief and the correct iman with regards to the statement the statement that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the author has mentioned these four affairs here and the first one is ta'atuhu fi ma amara the first one the author has mentioned in this manner ta'atuhu fi ma amara to obey him and that which he has commanded sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so this is something that is known that from the rights and from fulfilling the statement properly and the fact that an individual he says that he bears witness and that he believes and he testifies with his tongue and, and with his heart that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and that he is sent with the message that he is sent with the message and the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is the messenger and he has been given revelation from Allah, the one who testifies to this and he believes this. Then this requires for him to comply with that which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has commanded. And to believe that which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has commanded is from Allah and not from himself. It's from Allah Azza wa Jal. And that the Messenger, he was sent with a message from Allah. And that which the Messenger he has commanded, in reality this is what Allah has commanded. This is what the statement requires. And for this reason, he must be obeyed sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because obeying him is obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these testifications of faith, al-shahadatan, mutaqarinatan, maqroonatan, one of them will not benefit without the other. They have to come together. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. So in this manner, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was sent in order for Allah to be obeyed. In order for... Allah to be obeyed and that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was sent with is the message from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and this is what this requires and necessitates for the one who states that statement and he believes in this reality that Muhammad ibn Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he is a messenger sent from the Lord of the worlds he is sent with the message and the revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala then he, then he must be obeyed then he must be obeyed and obeying him in reality is obeying Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala the messenger he was sent for the purpose of conveying. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has clarified this. He says, وَمَعَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ That there is nothing upon the Messenger except to convey. And to convey what Allah has revealed to him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And He has fulfilled that. And He has fulfilled that. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And likewise, that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commands, and that which he has made permissible and impermissible, it's exactly that which Allah Azza wa Jalla has commanded and made permissible. Because he sent from Allah, and this is what this testification it necessitates and it requires. 
and has been narrated from Al Miqdad. Ibn Ma'di Kariba Rahim Radi Allahu Anhu that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Ala wa inna maharram al Rasu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Mithu Maharram Allah. Ala inna maharram al Rasul Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Mithla ma Haram Allah. The the whatever the messenger he has verily, whatever the messenger has declared haram, it is exactly like that which Allah has declared haram. Because he is sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's a messenger from Allah Azza wa Jal. Therefore, to obey Allah, one must obey the messenger because he is the one who was sent with the message. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And like this, Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, May al Rasula faqad ata'ah. Allah, that whoever obeys the messenger, then verily he has obeyed Allah. So the one who testifies to this statement, and he believes in his heart that the, that the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is sent with revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it requires for him to obey him. This is what the statement necessitates. Ta'atuhu fima fima amara. Ta'atuhu fima amara. As for the one who makes this statement, but he doesn't believe it in his heart. Yani, or he makes this statement, excuse me. As for the one who makes this statement, but he believes that he doesn't have to obey the messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He makes this statement. He said, he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. But then at the same time, he believes he doesn't have to obey him. This is what his creed is and belief is. If he wants to follow him, he will follow him. If he wants to follow somebody else, he will follow somebody else. His creed and his aqidah, i'tiqaduhu, annahu la yajibu alayhi itiba'u nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ta'atuhu. And in his creed, he believes, after testifying to the statement, that it's not obligatory for him to follow him, then this person in reality is a liar. This person in reality is a liar. And he is from, considered from the hypocrites, the one who makes this statement, but he believes he doesn't have to obey him. This is not correct and this is not accepted. This is not correct and this is not accepted. And this testification here is rejected. Shahadatu hada marduda. Marduda wa huwa kathibun fi shahadatihi. Naam. The one who makes this statement and he testifies that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he believes he doesn't have to. His creed is that he does not have to obey the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then his testification is not correct. Because the meaning of this testification and what it requires, ta'atuhu fi ma'amra, that he has to believe this. This is required in the belief that he has an obligation to obey him. For everyone who has come. Uh, after the, the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the coming of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it's incumbent to believe that everybody until the end of the days has to obey him. It's incumbent and an obligation upon everyone to obey the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until the day of resurrection. As for the one who believes that it's an obligation to obey the Messenger he has this belief. He makes this, test, this testification and he believes that it's an obligation to obey the messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal, but he opposed him or he disobeyed him. Not because he believes it's permissible, but rather because he's overcome by his whims and desires and he's tried by lusts and he fell victim to his, his desires and his hawa, wa shahawat al muharrama. This person, he's not considered a disbeliever, but rather he is a sinner. He's a sinner and his testification is deficient. His testification is deficient. So the point here is that the aqidah is very important to understand. The difference between the two, both of them, one of them, even if the one he obeyed the messenger of Allah, but he believed that he does not have to. But he believed it's not an obligation to obey him. If he wants to obey him, he can. If he doesn't want to, he doesn't have to. And this is his creed, along with making that testification of faith. Then this will not be accepted from him. This will not be accepted from him. As for the one who believes that it's an obligation to obey the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but he fell short in that because of his desires and his whims and his weakness in faith, then likewise this one, uh, uh, like, like this person here, he's considered a sinner and he is disobedient. And his shahada will be deficient according to the amount of his opposition to the sunnah and his disobedience to the Messenger of, the, uh, uh, to, to the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this affair of obeying the messenger is a serious affair. And this is why the messenger he was sent, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As for the second issue that the author he has mentioned, rahimahallahu ta'ala, he says, وَتَصْدِيقُهُ فِي مَا أَخْبَرَ وَتَصْدِيقُهُ فِي مَا أَخْبَرَ To believe in everything that he is informed of. Naam, to believe in everything that he is informed of. 
And, and this is because he, he's the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is what that testification requires. The one who believes that he was sent with revelation from the Lord of the worlds, subhanahu wa ta'ala, from above the heavens, from Allah, Azza wa Jal, he was received revelation. He's a prophet and messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then what he speaks of is not from his own desires. And it's not from his whims. And he's not making this up, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on his own. Rather, it's revelation that's revealed to him. Rather, it's revelation that is revealed to him. This is an obligation. The one who believes that he's a messenger, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then it's an obligation to believe in that which he has informed. And this is the right of the prophets and the right of the messengers. All of them, alayhim salatu wa salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has mentioned about this, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوهَى That he does not uh, speak from his desires. Verily, it is, a rev it is nothing but a revelation that is revealed to him. And he does not speak from his whims and from the affairs that he would like to obtain himself personally. And he does not add to the revelation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nor did he decrease whatsoever. Rather, he conveyed that message and he fulfilled that amana. And he has completed that responsibility and at his hands, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his command, qad kamul ad deen the deen has been completed. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deenan. So the Prophet ﷺ, he does not speak from his desires. Rather, it is revelation that is revealed to him. So therefore, it's an obligation to believe everything that he has mentioned wasallam. To believe everything that he has mentioned wasallam. That this is the correct creed and this is what this testif testification requires and necessitates. And for it to be correct, then one cannot belie or deny anything that has been authentically reported on the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Examples of this in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to clarify that this is the haqq and is the truth and this is what this requires and that he's the Messenger of Allah and he does not say anything except for the truth. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what has been narrated by Abu Dawood and also by Imam Ahmed and other than them, rahimahumullahu ta'ala, from the narration of Abdullah ibn Amr, radiyallahu anhuma. He says, Kuntu aktubu kull shay'in asma'uhu min rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uridu hibdahu. He said, I used to write every single thing that I heard from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I wanted to memorize. He says, فَنَهَتْنِي قُرَيْشٌ so Quraysh, they, they prohibited me from this. They saw me doing this and they prohibited, they prohibited me from this. He said, are you going to write everything that, that, that you hear from him? And he, and, and, and he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is a man, he's a human being that he speaks whenever he's angry and whenever he's happy. And this is how they spoke to him. This is how they spoke to him, radiyallahu anhu. So what did he say? He said, فَأَمْسَكْتُ uh, عَنِ الْكِتَابَ He said, because of this, I stopped writing. I refrained from writing. I need the narrations that he heard from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he wanted to memorize. So he says, radiyallahu anhu, فَذَكَرْتُ ذَلِكَ لِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ So I mentioned this to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَأَوْمَأَ بِأُسْبُعِهِ إِلَى فِيهِ فَقَالَ أُكْتُب فَوَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ مَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ إِلَّا الْحَقِّ He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Verily you must write. He pointed to his mouth with his finger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He pointed with his finger to his mouth. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, And he told him, Write, Uktub. He said, Write, I swear by the one whom my soul is in his hands that nothing comes out of this except for the truth. He pointed to his finger, with his finger, excuse me, to his mouth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said to him, I swear by the one whom my soul is in his hand, nothing comes out of this except for the truth. مَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ إِلَّا الْحَقِّ مَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ إِلَّا الْحَقِّ So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he affirmed this, that whatever he says, it is the truth. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He testified for him that whatever he says, it's not from his desires. Rather, it's revelation that is revealed, for, that is revealed to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of this is a clarification that whatever he mentioned, it must be believed. That whatever he has mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and is reported to us authentically, 
whether we understand the wisdom behind it or we don't, it's an obligation to believe it, that he said it and it's the truth. That he said it and it's the truth. The Prophet ﷺ, he spoke about events that occurred in the previous nations and he spoke about events that will occur in this nation. And he, and he after his death ﷺ, and he, and he spoke about events in the hereafter and in the grave and he spoke about events in affairs of the unseen and he spoke about the angels and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he spoke about the throne and he spoke about the Jannah ﷺ, and he spoke about rulings and regulations and that which is permissible to impermissible from food and transactions. And other than that ﷺ, and everything that has come to us and reported authentically with a chain that is correct, then it's the haq and it's the truth and it's siddiq. Minhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's the truth and it's the haq from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَوَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي مَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ إِلَّا الْحَقِّ Allahu Akbar. Likewise, it has been narrated from Abi Qatadah radiyallahu anhu in Sahih Muslim that the Prophet Sallallahu he came to them and he was encouraging them and he was mentioning to them the virtue of al-jihad fi sabilillah and he was mentioning to, to them the virtue of al-iman billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala that these are the most virtuous deeds and then a man he stood up and he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ قُلْتَ أَفْوَانَ أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ قُتِلْتَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَتُكَثَّرُ خَطَايَايَ أَتُكَثَّرُ عَنِّي خَطَايَايَ he said, uh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if I were to, to be killed in the path of Allah and fighting in jihad, will my sins be expiated from me? So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فَقَالَ نَعَمْ He said, yes. He says, نَعَمْ وَأَنْتَ صَابِرٌ مُحْتَسِبٌ مُقْبِلٌ غَيْرُ مُدْبِرٌ He said, yes. يعني, you will be, your sins will be exp- ex- expiated from you as long as you... Uh, were patient in that and you were hoping for the reward and you are advancing upon the enemy and not retreating and turning your back to them. And then he said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, illa dain, illa dain, except for the debt. Except for the debt. And this is the shahid. And if the man is asking him, or the shaheed, the one who dies in the battle, fighting the kufar, fi sabirillah, will all of his sins be expiated from him? The Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, yes. Yes, if you are patient and you are hoping for the reward from Allah and you are advancing upon the enemy and not retreating and, and showing your back, in this case, yes, all of your sins will be ex- expiated from you except for the debt. And then he says, فَإِنَّ جِبْرِيلْ قَالَ لِي ذَلِكَ Because verily Jibril, he is the one who told me this. Verily Jibril, he told me this. Meaning that this is revelation. That just as Jibril, he descended upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the Quran, likewise he descend with the Sunnah and Al Hakam al Shariya. He descend on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the Sunnah, just like he descend with the Quran, Jibreel, it's revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one wording in Sunnah and Nasai, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Illa Dain, except for debt. And then he said, Sarani bihi Jibreel Anifa. He said, except for the debt. And Jibreel, he has just uh, revealed this to me um, a, a moment ago. Jibreel, he has just revealed this to me. Sarani bihi Jibreel anifa. He has just real, revealed this to me a moment ago. And so the point here is that the revelation descended upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in two manners. With the Qur'an from Allah azza wa jal, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and likewise the regulations and the rulings and the ahkam, al-ahkam al shariya that are found in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like this issue here, that the, the shahada fi sabilillah, to kafiru kulli shayin min al-dhunubi illa dayn, and you to kafir kulli shayin illa dayn, it expiates everything except for debt. And this was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this ruling and this understanding from Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam. Likewise, it has been narrated from Jabir and also from Ibn Abbasin radiallahu anhum jami'an that Jibreel, he led the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in prayer. And he said, Ammani Jibreel alayhi salamu inda al-bayti marratayn al-hadith. The hadith is very long. And the Jibreel, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the beginning of Islam. And he led the Prophet ﷺ in prayer two times in the Bayt, and he, at the Kaaba. 
the first time to clarify the, the beginning times of the Salat, and the second time to clarify the ending times of the Salat, and this is authentic narration on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And likewise, it has been narrated from Zayd ibn Haritha, radiyallahu anhu, that he said, uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ جِبْرِيلَ أَتَاهُ فِي أَوَّلِ مَا أُوْحِيَ إِلَيْهِ فَعَلَّمُهُ الْوُضُوءَ وَالصَّلَاةِ That Jibreel, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the, in the beginning of the revelation, and he taught him how to make wudu and how to pray. Jibreel, he taught the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the beginning of the revelation, he came to him and taught him how to make wudu and how to pray. This is collected in uh, the Musnad by Imam Ahmed and also authenticated by Shaykh Al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala in As-Silsila as sahihah number 841. So we see that what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks from is not from his desires. In, uh, in huwa illa wahyu nyuha. Now that this, all these narrations and there are others in this likewise and events that have, occur, have occurred in the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they clarify that Jibreel he comes to the Prophet with the Qur'an and likewise he comes to him with the Sunnah and the Al-Ahkam al to clarify that which is in the Qur'an as well. The point is that whatever he mentions sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is the truth and it's an obligation and from the correctness of the testification of faith that he is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tasdiquhu fi ma akhbara tasdiquhu fi ma akhbara to believe everything that he has said to believe everything that he has said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so this means to believe and ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah I bear witness that Muhammad he's the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the first thing that this requires for one to believe with certain faith that he is the prophet that he has received revelation that he is the prophet of Allah and he has and he has nabuwa or risala nam he's been given a nabuwa or risala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this means that everything that he said it must be believed and it must be Believed that one must believe in everything that he has informed us of, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he is a prophet and messenger. Because he is a prophet and messenger. And likewise, to believe that everything that he has mentioned is from Allah. Whether he has mentioned that it's the Quran, or whether sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he has mentioned it in the narration of al hadith al Qudsi, for example, or if he mentioned it in al hadith al Marfu', sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from his narrations and from his own. Words, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of this is from Allah Azza wa Jal. All of this is from Allah Azza wa Jal. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى And if this is the case, بَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكُمْ جَمِيعًا وَزَادِكُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Then now we understand it's an obligation to follow him. فَتِبَعُهُ وَاجِبٌ إِذَا كَانَ كَذَلِكَ it's, he's, he, he received revelation. He is a prophet and messenger. What he has come with, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is from Allah. Then it's an obligation to believe him, and it's an obligation to follow him. And this is the issue of ta'atuhu fi ma'amara, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have some great examples in as-salaf al-salih, with regards to this issue here, believing the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Testifying that he is the messenger, testifying that he is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and believing what he said. And this in reality, this in reality is the completeness and the shahadu would never be correct if a person did not believe in the sunnah of the Prophet and he did not believe in the messenger and that, uh, the, in, the, in, in his statements and that which he has informed us of. If there's a hadith that is authentic, especially if it's in Bukhari and Muslim, for example, and then he denied it or belied it, or he did not understand it, so he rejected it, like the the fly falling into the to the to the to the cup, or even the descent of Allah in the third of the night in the manner befitting His Majesty, or other affairs that has been revealed, all of it is the truth from the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's revelation from Allah azza wa jal, and it's incumbent to believe him. نعم فإنه صادق ومسدوق. He is the one who is truthful, and he is the the one who is aided with the truth from Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We have great examples in the Salaf al-Sadih with regards to this. Great examples with the Salaf al-Sadih with regards to this. We will take two examples بإذن الله تعالى in the class this evening. One of them from al-Muhajirin, and the other one from the Ansar. 
يعني with regards to believing him and to testifying to the truthfulness of what he says and, and what he has mentioned and informed of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first narration we have has been collected by Al-Hakim. Rahimahallahu uh, ta'ala fi mustadrakihi. And Al-Imam Shaykh Al-Abani, Rahimahallahu ta'ala, he has authenticated this narration. And it is found in Al-Silsil Al-Sahiha, number 306. And at the top, Shaykh Al-Abani, Rahimahallahu ta'ala, of this portion of his work. And before this narration, he said, Tasmiya to Abi Bakrin bisuddiq. And the reason why Abu Bakr, he was named a Siddiq. So he mentioned the narration in, in Aisha radiallahu anha that she says, "Lama usriya bin Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa asbah yatahadath al-Nas bi thalik." Now he said, "So whenever the Prophet he was taken on the night journey, sallallahu alaihi wasallam to al-Masjid al-Aqsa in al-Quds, in Jerusalem, asbah yatahadath al-Nas bi thalik." The people they woke, they come and they start talking about this. And the Prophet he went in one night and came back. From uh, from Mecca to Al Quds, and then he came back in one night, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, with an amazing affair that he mentioned that he had saw and the events that had taken place on that journey. And then whenever he came back and he informed them all in the all in the one night, the the people they start talking about this. She said, "Radiyallahu anha farted the nasu mimman kanu amanu bihi wa sadaquhu." Some of the people who used to believe in him and they testified to his truthfulness have turned back and disbelieved. Farted for Teddu, they have, and he, they have left faith. They have made ridda because of this. And they, they hastened to Abu Bakr with this, what they have heard now. They didn't believe this. They heard this, they, they believed uh, before, but this one, they, they did not believe. They did not believe. Some, some of them. فَقَالُوا هَلْ لَكَ إِلَىٰ صَاحِبِكَ يَزْعَمُ أَنَّهُ أُسْرِيَ بِهِ عَلَّيْلَ إِلَىٰ بَيْتِ الْمَقْدِسِ So, it says that, uh, have you heard about your companion that he's claiming now that he has been on a night journey all the way to the Bayt al-Maqdis tonight? Al-Bayt al-Maqdis tonight. Qala, aw qala thalika, Abu Bakr, he said, did he say that? Qalu na'am. They said yes. So then Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, his first he said, did he say that? And then they said yes. And then he said, lin kana qala thalika, laqad sadaqa. He said, if he did truly say that, then verily he was truthful. He said the truth. He said, so do you really believe him that he went in one night, this night, all the way to Bayt al-Maqdis, and then he came back before the morning? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he said, yes, I believe him. He said, إِنِّي لَأُصَدِّقُهُ فِي مَا هُوَ أَبْعَدُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ he said, Verily, I testify to the truthfulness of him, and I believe that what she has mentioned in which is something that is that is further than that, and greater than that. He said, He said, I believe that he is receiving information from the heavens in the mornings and the afternoons. And if he said this, and I already believe that he's receiving a revelation from the heavens above the sky in the morning and in the afternoon. So then if he said this likewise, I believe him. Then he, if he said this, likewise, I believe him. He said, فَلِذَلِكَ She says, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنَّا فَلِذَلِكَ سُمِّيَ أَبُو بَكْرٍ الصديق. Because of this, Abu Bakr, he was called and given the title as siddiq Because he believed. يعني تَصْدِيقُهُ فِيمَا أَخْبَرَ تَصْدِيقُهُ فِيمَا أَخْبَرَ that, the, that, that Abu Bakr, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ He believed in what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed of. Even if his mind can't understand, he already believes and he sees the proofs and he knows he's the messenger of Allah. That he receives revelation from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was sent with guidance from the Lord of the worlds. So then whatever he mentions, is the haq and it's the truth. Whatever he mentions, is the haq and it's the truth. And this is what is incumbent upon every individual who testifies that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Likewise, it has been collected by Ibn Abdul Barr, Rahimahullah Ta'ala fi Jami' Bayan al Ilmi wa Fadrihi. And this is an example from the Ansar. We know Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, he's the leader of the Muhajirin and he's the leader of the Sahaba and he's the best of this Ummah after the Prophet. Here we have another example from another aspect from the companions, from the Ansar. 
And this is the narration uh, of, uh, uh, of Sa'd ibn Mu'adh radiyallahu anhu. Sa'd ibn Mu'adh, Sayyid al-Aws. He is the leader of the tribe of Aws radiyallahu anhu. And what has been mentioned about him radiyallahu anhu, ihtazza. إهتز العرش لموته رضي الله عنه that whenever he died رضي الله عنه the throne of Allah عز وجل shook the throne of Allah عز وجل shook at the death of سعد بن معاذ رضي الله عنه so here is a narration that سعد he is mentioning to us رضي الله عنه ابن عبد البر he mentioned with his chain to سعيد ابن المسيب to سعيد ابن Al Musayyib Rahimahallahu Ta'ala from the students of Ibn Abbas and from the Tabi'een Rahimahumallahu Ta'ala. So he says that Sa'id ibn Musayyib he is narrating on Ibn Abbas Radiallahu Anhuma. Qala Qala Sa'd ibn Mu'ad. Ibn Abbas Radiallahu Anhuma he's narrating this narration on Sa'd ibn Mu'ad Radiallahu Anhum. What does he say? He says Thalathun Ana fihinna Raju. يعني كما ينبغي وما سوى ذلك فأنا رجل من الناس. يعني this is a حديث موقوف حديث موقوف. But Sad رضي الله عنه he's talking to us now about manhood about الرجولة الرجولة. نعم somebody this is the true understanding of manhood. If a person he wants to be a man then look to what the companions they considered a man. He says there are three issues or there are three affairs. That with regards to them, I'm a man. With regards to these three affairs, I'm a man. Yani, he says, Yani, kama yanbagi. Yani, meaning as one should truly be. A true man at this time. He said, Wa wa And other than these three affairs, then I'm just a man from the people. Yani, I'm just like everybody else. But in these three issues right here, he says, I'm a man with regards to these affairs. Meaning I take care of business and I fulfill the responsibility properly. What are these affairs? What are these three affairs? Ya Tura. He says, Radiallahu anhu. He says, we pay attention, this is manhood right here. Ma sammitu min Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadithan qat illa alimtu anhu haqul min Allah. He said, I never heard a narration from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam except I knew it was the truth from Allah. Allahu Akbar. He said, Thalathun ana fihin rajul. And he said, three affairs, I'm a man with regards to these affairs. And he said, this is manhood. Somebody who wants to be a man, listen to Sa'id ibn Mu'adh. Radiallahu anhu, the one that whenever he died, the arsh of ar-Rahman, it shook. Radiallahu anhu. What did he say? Ma sami'tu min Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadithan qat. Illa alimtu anhu haqul min Allah. He said, I never ever heard a, a narration from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ever, except I knew it was the truth from Allah. If you want to be a man, and to the meaning, like he says, Kama Yanbagi, in the manner that is required and the manner that is correct and correct and befitting, a true man, then you must believe in everything that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has informed of Tasdiquhu Fima Akbara. Tasdiquhu Fima Akbara Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said the second one, he says, Wala kuntu fi salatin qat fashagaltu nafsi bighayriha hatta akbiyaha. And he says, and the point is in the first one, but we read the, the other three for the benefit. He says, and I have never been in prayer ever. And I preoccupied myself with other than that until I finished the prayer. Allah Akbar. He said, <laughs> Three affairs I'm a man with regards to. And other than that, I'm just a man from the people. Yani. I'm just I'm an average, average individual like the rest of the, of, of the brothers. He says, I, I never heard anything from the Messenger of Allah ever except I knew it was the truth from Allah. And then he says, in the second one, that I've never been in Salat ever. And been preoccupied, and he preoccupied my soul, myself, with other than the prayer until I finish it. Allahu Akbar. The third one, he says, "Wala kuntu fi janazatin qat fahaddathu nafsi bighayriha." He said, "I've never been in a funeral prayer with the with the with the deceased in a funeral prayer, ever." And I spoke to myself with uh, talking about others, thinking about other than this than than, than the deceased. 
The only thing I'm thinking about is what will the deceased say and what will be said to it. Hatta and sarifa anha until I leave from it. And if he's affairs here, consider he's considering this that, that this is manhood right here. He says, and he's considering this true manhood. And the fact that he will be in prayer and he will not think about anything and he will not be preoccupied with anything except the salat until he's done. Allahu Akbar. From the beginning to the end. Min Allahu Akbar. All the way to Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. He is, he is praying. He's not thinking about the dunya, what he will do tomorrow, what he did yesterday, what's going to happen next week or what's happening now. Rather, he is talking about, he, he's, he's focused on his prayer. Allahu Akbar. He said, and I've never been in a funeral prayer, in a janazah, ever. And I spoke to myself about anything else except for the janazah. And I never thought about anything except for the deceased. From the time I'm in the prayer until he's done, and until he leaves from, 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 from the body. Now he says, the only thing he's thinking about, what is he going to say? And what is going to be said to it? Like, this is what his mind is upon, upon the deceased at this time. Subhanallah. He said, at least these are the three things he considered himself a man with regards to, meaning that he fulfilled the rights of these affairs and that he fulfilled this responsibility in a manner yambaghi, in a manner that is required and befitting and correct. The one who narrated on Ibn Abbas, the Tabi'i, Sa'id ibn Musayyib, Rahimahullah ta'ala, what does he say? Qari ibn Musayyib, هَذِهِ الْخِصَالِ مَا كُنْتُ أَحْسِبُهَا إِلَّا فِي النَّبِي He said, these affairs here that he's speaking about, I didn't think that these affairs could be in anybody except for a prophet. Yani, I did, Sayyid ibn Musayyib, he said, these, three affairs, these things he mentioned in this narration, I didn't think anybody would be able to perform the, in, in this manner uh, except for someone who was a prophet. Yani, meaning that this is a high rank in status, Yani. That uh, this is a high ranking status. But the point and the proof and the shahid from this is the first affair. That he considered himself a man with regards to this. And that is that he never heard a statement from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He never heard a hadith or a narration except he knew that it is the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except for he knew that it is the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the examples and the role models. Many people today... They have doubts about the, about the sunnah of the Prophet. Many, many Muslims have been tried with this. And they have doubts. And they say, and they have doubts about the sunnah of the Prophet. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that, inna, inna rabbana yanzilu fi uh, ila sama'a dunya fi thuluth al-layl akhir wa hinna yabqa thuluth al-layl akhir. Naam that Allah, he descends in a manner befitting his majesty in the last third of every night. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned many narrations that are authentic and found in Bukhari and Muslim. And many of the Muslims have started doubting about them. And they have been tried by doubts with regards to the, the rulings and the regulations. And some people they have found, for example, the ruling of stoning, the one who is committed fornication and who has been married previously. They find fault with this and they say that this is barbarianism. And also the thief that his hand should be cut if he is caught and, and tried in the Muslim court and for, for stealing. And, and the likes like this, that these rulings, they are not correct. All of this is from the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's an obligation to believe that this is from Allah. It's an obligation to believe that this is from Allah. And many people, they doubt in that. Likewise, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned about the women affairs. And he mentioned that uh, the obligation of obeying the husband. And he mentioned uh, other issues and that some women, they don't accept that. And, and they don't believe in that. And, and the likes like this. Uh, this is all deficiency in the testification of faith. This is all from a deficiency in the statement that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From his right, from his right as a messenger, is that he is believed sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is from the completion of the faith and believing in him and that he is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ta'atuhu fima fima طاعته فيما أمره طاعته فيما أمر صلى الله عليه وسلم وتصديقه فيما أخبره وتصديقه فيما فيما أخبره ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى in his uh, uh, has been mentioned or collected in المجموع الفتاوى in Majmu al Fatawa, in volume number 7, page 639, he mentioned about hypocrisy, the pure hypocrisy, the true hypocrisy. And he says, He says, As for the pure hypocrisy, 
that there is no doubt about the disbelief of the one who performs it. فَأَنْ لَا يَرَى وَجُوبَ تَصْدِيقَ الرَّسُولِ فِيمَا أَخْبَرَ بِهِ وَلَا وَجُوبَ طَاعَاتِهِ فِيمَا أَمَرَ بِهِ This is that he believes that it's not obligatory to believe everything that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed of. And likewise, he does not believe that it's an obligation to obey him in that which he has commanded. Nam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, فَأَمَّا النِّفَاقُ الْمَهْضُ the pure hypocrisy. That there is no doubt about the disbelief of the one who performs this and has this creed. He says, That is that one, the Billah, he will not believe that it's an obligation to believe everything. To believe everything that the Messenger وسلم, has informed of, and also he does not believe and it's an obligation to obey him and everything that he has commanded. He says, mm-hmm. He says, even if he believed at the same time that the Messenger وسلم, he has great status and rank with regards to knowledge and action, and he believes that it's permissible to believe him and to obey him. But he says, for example, oh, it will not, uh, it doesn't harm to have different religions as long as the one being worshipped is one. He says, وَيَرَى أَنَّهُ تَحْسُ النَّجَاتُ وَالسَّعَادَةُ بِمُتَابَعَةِ الرَّسُولِ وَبِغَيْرِ مُتَعْبَاتِهِ And the one who believes that one will be saved, and he, was, he will have Savior from the fire, and he will have the happiness and bliss of the paradise, whether he follows the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or if he fa- without following him. Nam, uh, without following him. Yani, and, he, and he goes on to mention whether he follows the way of the philosophy and the ways of these people and the sabi'ah, or the likes like this, and, and, and the likes, he says, in, even if they believe him, even if they believe in the Messenger, وسلم, but they have this belief, it's not an obligation. It's not an obligation to obey him. It's okay for someone to be a Christian or a Jew. It's okay for someone to be a, a, a Buddhist. It, it, they believe that, even though they make the statement that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. Maybe even, the, and they believe it's permissible to obey him. Maybe they even obey him in some things, but they have this creed it, that it's not an obligation to obey him or to follow him. And you can go to paradise by following him or by following somebody else. Now he says, فَإِنَّهُمْ وَإِنْ صَدَّقُوهُ وَأَطَاؤُهُ فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يَعْتَقِدُونَ وُجُوبَ ذَلِكَ عَلَى جَمِيعَ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ He says, even if they believed in him and, and they obeyed him, but they do not believe that it's an obligation for all of the people of the earth to follow him. بِحَيْثُ يَكُونُ تَارِكُ لِتَصْدِيقِهِ وَطَاعَتِهِ مُعَذَّبًا he says that they that and they don't believe that the one who leaves off believing in him and obeying him that he will not be punished. He says, and this uh, and he, whether they believe that it's okay, yani that the ones who follow the ways of the different religions and the likes like this, this is like following the madhab of a particular imam or the tariqah of a particular shaykh, yani the sufiya, or to obey a particular king and ruler. And he says, and this is exactly the religion of the Tatar and those who are along with them. And the point from this issue here is to emphasize this affair. Ta'atuhu fima amara wa tasdiquhu fima akhbara. Tasdiquhu fima akhbara, tasdiquhu fima akhbara wa ta'atuhu fima amara sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I repeat the beginning of these words to show its importance. Fa'amma nifaqu al-mahdu. الذي لا ريب في كفر صاحبه فإن فأن لا يرى وجوب تصديق الرسول فيما أخبر به ولا وجوب طاعته فيما أمر به. He says that as for the pure hypocrisy, which there is no doubt about the disbelief of the person who has this creed, is that he will believe that it's not an obligation to believe in the truthfulness of the messenger and everything that he has informed, nor is it an obligation to obey him in everything that he has commanded. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, Shaykh al-Islam, he's mentioning that this is the nifaq al-mahd, that a person, he would believe this, even if he taste, even if he testified he's the messenger of Allah, or even if he did obey him, if he believes it's permissible, but not an obligation upon everybody, then at this time, the testification is not, is not correct. So then the author, what he's mentioning, فَمَعْنَ شَهَدَتِي أَنَّ مُحَمَدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ تَسْدِيكُهُ فِيمَا أَخْبَرَ وَطَاعَتُهُ فِيمَا أَمَرَ These affairs, they're incumbent from the perfection and the completeness and the correctness of an iman and believing in the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There were two more affairs with regards to this issue and the clarification of the correct meaning and understanding and requirements of the shahada. 
with shahada anna Muhammad Rasulullah and they are وَشْتِنَابُ مَا عَنْهُ نَهَا وَزَجَرَ وَشْتِنَابُ مَا عَنْهُ نَهَا وَزَجَرَ وَشْتِنَابُ مَا عَنْهُ نَهَا وَزَجَرَ وَأَلَّا يُعْبَدَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِمَا شَرَعَا وَبِإِنِّ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى We continue and complete these affairs in the next class هذا وصلى الله عليه وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم